Here's how to install Parsec. Parsec is a program that lets you connect to anybody's computer and you're allowed to play games on their computer, you're allowed to edit in programs, and overall it's just a very useful program to have. For this tutorial, I'll be showing you how to get it, how to install it, how to use it, and what kind of functions it has. So you'll want to go to the website, which I'll leave in the description, and you'll want to do Try Parsec. Now alternatively, you can download Parsec and create an account when you open the program, but you also have the option of making one on the website. What I like to usually do when I show people this program is I go to the download page. It works best on a Windows computer, but I believe it also works on Mac, although you would need more advanced specs for that. Uh, but I will just say Windows is definitely the best to host, but hosting and Connecting to other people's computers are two different things. I'm going to download the Windows one for this tutorial. And once it's downloaded, you're going to want to install it like you would any other app. Now, I already have Parsec installed, but you're just going to want to follow the uh, instructions. I recommend doing per user just so you can create a bunch of accounts. Just let Parsec install. Once you've installed Parsec, you should be greeted with this screen that allows you to enter your email and password. If you do not already have a Parsec account, you can feel free to sign up right here. It'll take you to the sign up page. From there, you can enter your email and password and your username. So one thing I definitely recommend with Parsec, however, is be absolutely sure to keep your password and email in a place where you'll remember it and a safe place because if you don't use Parsec on a regular basis it will log you out and you will have to log back into Parsec but if you're like me and use Parsec you know every week or so you're most likely not going to have that problem I've almost never been logged out on the PC version so you won't have to worry about that if you plan to use it regularly if you don't plan to use it on a regular basis, then keep in mind that you probably will have to log back in. So I'm just going to log in. All right, once you're logged in, you'll normally be greeted with the computer section. That's where all of your computer connections will show up. But I'll go over each of the functions of Parsec here. Overlay is where when you connect to someone or host, there will be a little Parsec button in the corner of your screen. That'll allow you to access the Parsec settings if you wish. Overlay warnings, that's when it'll say like, oh, your connection's not so good. Stuff like that. Uh, I haven't really messed around with the swap command, but that's for Mac, so understandable. This is where you can change whether you want it to be full screen or windowed. Render is your GPU. VSync. I usually turn VSync off to prevent to um, have lower latency, but if you or your friends don't mind latency, then you can feel free to turn it on. Decoder, again, is your graphics card. You'll want to set it to whatever your graphics card is. H.265, it uses the latest codecs. Definitely set it to whatever the highest codec you have is. Hosting is when you are actually letting people connect to your computer. By default, I think it's disabled, but you can enable it only if your computer supports hosting. Mine does, thankfully, so people are able to connect to my computer. If you don't want people to connect to your computer, just feel free to hit disable. Resolution is, you know, whatever you want the resolution to be. I'd say just go with the resolution of your monitor or the resolution that your computer accepts. Bandwidth is kind of a complicated one. Bandwidth is how much internet is being used up by Parsec. If you have a friend connecting to you who doesn't have a very good internet connection, you'll want to bump it down to maybe 10, 7, 5, somewhere lower. But if both of the parties or all of the parties are on, say, an ethernet adapter, uh, feel free to use 50 because it'll give a much better display, much better connection overall but I usually say 20 or 30 is a safe bet regardless of who's connecting but let's say 
one of your parties that's connected to you is having issues with their display, um, say the screen, their screen is freezing or whatnot, that's usually because they have a bad internet connection, in which case you'll want to bump down the bandwidth limit. Usually bumping down the bandwidth limit will prevent their screen from pausing, and it'll clear up all the issues. FPS, pretty self-explanatory. If you don't have a good enough uh, machine, you can try 30, so it's not too demanding. Otherwise, I recommend 60 and other FPSs if your computer can handle it. Display, yes, your monitor. Audio, that's to pick up. It, it picks up which audio device you're capturing from. I use my headphones for my Astro Mix Amp. That's where all my audio comes in. Echo canceling. It's kind of a complicated one. You're most likely gonna want to do new because if you're calling with your friends on Discord, you're gonna want to make it so that they won't hear themselves echoing on Discord. If you do select new, you'll be able to pick from an app to exclude the audio from, and in which case you would select Discord or any other programs that you're talking to your friends on. I haven't really messed with these two. I don't have any virtual gamepads or tablets. The virtual gamepad type, that is your controller. You have the options between Xbox 360 controller and DualShock 4. I personally recommend to do Xbox 360 as it will have the best compatibility with Parsec. But if for whatever reason you need to do DualShock 4, you can also do that. Just make sure you have a program called DS4 Windows as it'll also make PlayStation 4 controller connectivity much more better. The quality, I usually have it on lowest latency. Lowest latency has the worst image quality, but it has the least amount of time for your friends to press their buttons and have their buttons be registered onto your computer. If you do highest quality, most likely there's going to be a lot of input delay, but the image will look good. If they all have a good enough interconnect connection, I recommend just doing balanced, but lowest quality latency does provide the best gameplay experience. Approved apps is helpful for when you don't want people seeing other apps besides the ones you want. So if you turn it on, you can pick from a bunch of different apps to let people connect to. So for example, I can let people see Dolphin, BizHawk, Elgato, all kinds of things, but I don't let them see Discord, OBS, or Google Chrome, for example. I'd only do that if you're not comfortable with showing people everything on your computer. Otherwise, you can turn it off and it'll just display your computer like normal. These other f options, I don't really recommend messing around with. You probably won't need to. There are a bunch of hotkeys for Parsec. The most helpful ones would be Control F1 and Control F3 to host. Uh, as a host, you can kick or accept all guests waiting to connect to your computer. Gamepad, you can mess around with your gamepad uh, that you're using for Parsec. There are some experimental features I wouldn't recommend messing around with. An account is just your Parsec account. For this step, I'll be showing computers. Let's say you're a, you're a client and you're trying to connect to another person's computer. Basically, what you'll want to do is you'll want to add, add them as a friend. So type their friend ID and add them. Wait for them to accept your friend request. And if you refresh, they should show up in your page. So let's say you want to connect to a friend. You'll just hit the connect button and it'll send the signal to their parsec that you want to join. They can accept your request and you'll be connected to their computer just like that. Hosting is a different story. You'll have to also have people added as a friend. And when they connect to you, actually, I can use my alt as a demonstration. So I have my alt in this list. Let's just say that you want people to only be able to use gamepad control. You can uncheck all of these. And when people connect to your computer, they'll only be able to use their controllers. But let's say you're playing a game that doesn't have controller support and it requires the keyboard and mouse. You can give them keyboard and mouse support, but just be aware that they can control your keyboard and mouse. So only do it to people that you trust. Now on the topic of trust, there's also this option. When you tick this, 
Anybody can connect to your computer without them requesting to join. This can be a very scary option to have turned on, but the great thing is that you can also you can always close Parsec. And when you close Parsec with the quit option here, people won't be able to connect to your computer. So only have Parsec open if you're comfortable with people joining your computer. And then you can check this option if you don't feel like accepting all uh, requests. So I'm going to turn this off just for demonstration purposes. I'm going to try and connect to my computer on my phone. You'll see this little prompt that says this person is waiting to connect. You can hit accept or reject. Just hit accept and the person will be joined on your computer. Now on my phone, I'm actually connected to my computer. You can't see, but I am connected on my computer on my phone, which is a bonus step. I can, this is a bonus thing that I learned this year. Basically, you can download Parsec on Android devices. It doesn't work on iPhone, sadly, so I wouldn't recommend using an iPhone for Parsec purposes. But if you do happen to have an Android or a Samsung, you can download Parsec onto your phone. And you can make an alternative account to your computer or one. And what you can do is you can connect to your computer from your phone, which in theory would actually mean that you can control your computer from your phone wherever you are in the world, which is very helpful. It has helped me got gotten a lot of work done, you know, when I'm not at home or, you know, having to use the bathroom and stuff like that. For this next step, we're gonna want to go to Dolphin. This Dolphin I'm just going to use as an example though. So once you have your Dolphin open, you're gonna want to go to controllers. And let's say that you have someone connected to your PC. Unfortunately, I don't have a controller adapter for my phone, so I can't really continue with this step. So someone is connected to your computer and you want them to be player two for a game that you're playing. You'll want to go to configure, go to all devices, and you're gonna to want to ask them to hit a bunch of buttons on their controller. After they hit enough buttons, your computer will register their button inputs and it will show up as X input one or X input zero because X input is the 360 controller name that Dolphin goes by. And once they have their controller connected, you should see another controller besides yours. Then all you have to ask them to do is press the corresponding buttons on their controller. And just like that, you'll be able to play any kind of game locally. It's very helpful for emulators. It also works for games like Cuphead that only support local co-op. It can be used for literally any game. <laughs> so I highly recommend Parsec. Thank you for watching this tutorial. Make sure to like and subscribe to me on YouTube and Twitch. And I will see everybody in the next tutorial.